Morning pre-calculus class today, so I want to talk about uh, graphing the polar equations, So, which is sections 8.2 from uh, James Stewart. Okay, so we'll take a look at that, um, the way to sketch the graph. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so again, this one is section 8.2. So as you can see that this one is just a unit circle. Or you can say that's just like a polar coordinate system or the polar template, the graphing template. So we're using it. So when trying to figure out the graph of a polar equations, we can convert them to rectangular equations particularly to make it easier because you guys are getting used with the rectangular equations. Uh, rectangular equation, another way to call that is the uh, Cartesian Cartesian coordinate plane, which is x, y, in two-dimensional. If that's a three-dimensional, which we'll get into that in uh, multivariable calculus or honor geometry, x, y, z. So we recognize the graph in rectangular coordinates. It's easier to uh, come up with the graph. So let's say we do have r equals 7. So that means the radius is 7. And we can square both sides. So r squared equals 49. And then by using the Pythagorean theorem, or the equation of a circle, the standard form of the equation of a circle with the origin at 0, 0. So we do have r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So basically, we can just put it in. And then using the conic section of circles, so we can recognize that the center, it's right at 0, 0. And then the radius, which is square root of 49, it's 7. So this one is just like a circle. On the polar graph paper, it was center at the origin and out 7. Okay, so it's just a circle. So polar coordinates. So imagine this one. It's the. Um, it's just the. It's just the Earth. Okay, you're looking out from the pole. So this one's seven. So that means its radius. It's out seven from the origin from the pole. Okay. And let's try another one. So theta equals pi over three. Okay, so tangent of theta. So tangent of pi over three, which is consider root three. So one thing that we notice tangent according to the right triangle from the last lecture, 8.1. So tangent of theta is considered y over x. It's opposite over adjacent in the xy coordinate. So y over x equals root 3. And then by using y equals root 3x, cross multiplied it. So we do have a linear equation. So which is going back to algebra 1. And we recognize this as a line with the slope square root of 3. Okay, so to craft a polar plot a point, okay, so direction, pi over 3, and then make a straight line there, because that is going all the way through. If that's a line, it goes all the way, it's a non-stop, it's going to infinity, okay, so it's a straight line. And let's try another one, so r sine of theta equals negative 5. So one thing that we noticed, r sine of theta is just y. So we're using y equals negative 5. So it's just a straight line. It's a horizontal straight line and negative 5. So we count the unit. So from the pole, it's up 5 units from the pole. Uh, down 5 units, excuse me, because that's negative. So sometimes converting to a rectangular equation doesn't help us to figure out what kind of graph that looks like. So let's say we have 1 minus sine theta. If we try to convert that to the xy coordinate, so that it's going to be some kind of weird equations, or it's going to be like uh, conic sections. So let's say that we try to multiply by r uh, for each term. So we do have r squared equals r minus r sine theta. If we try to convert this one back to the rectangular form using the units, uh, the equation of a circle, so y equals r sine theta. So we do end up with x squared plus y squared equals square root of x squared plus y squared minus y. And you guys are probably wondering, you know, what this kind of equation is going to be like for the graph. So it's very difficult to tell. So instead of doing like this way, so we're going to be plotting points. And also, we can use the test of symmetry. So symmetry with respect to the polar axis, the x-axis. Okay, like this. So r comma theta or r comma negative theta. So one is the positive angle, the other one is a negative angle. 
So replace theta by negative theta, and if you get origin, the original equation back, so that means it's pretty much the same kind of figure. So symmetry with respect to the line, theta equals pi over 2, which is the y-axis. So this one can be written as r comma pi minus theta. So replace theta by pi minus theta, and if you get back the original equation. And the other line of symmetry, well, it's not the line of symmetry anymore. It's called the point of symmetry. So symmetry with respect to the pole, the origin. So it's reflected through the point of origin. So replace r by negative r, and then you'll get the original equation back. Okay, so that's some of the technique we can use for this. So let's test for symmetry. So r equals 1 minus sine theta. So we do have a polar axis. So r equals 1 minus sine negative theta. So this one is the same as r equals 1 plus sine theta. Well, the reason why it is the same, because that's sine of negative theta, it's an odd function. So odd function is showing the property. So sine of negative theta, it's the same as negative sine theta. So negative times negative, so it turns out to be positive up here. And this one is not true, so we just test the line of symmetry. So it's not considered a polar axis. So now the next one we want to verify is that theta equals pi over 2. So we plug in that pi minus theta for the quantity. Would that be the exact same outcome? So using the difference formula, the trig identity. So we do have 1 minus sine pi cosine theta minus cosine pi sine theta. So one thing we notice, sine pi is 0, so this one got canceled. So we left with cosine of pi, which is negative 1, negative times negative, so it's positive. So it's 1 plus sine theta. Uh, it's still considered negative because that negative, negative, positive times negative. So it's still 1 minus sine theta. So this one will end up with the exact same equation. So the next one, so for the pole. So negative r equals 1 minus sine theta. Would that be the true as the first one? So this one obviously is not the same as the original equation. So the graph is symmetric with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2, the y-axis. And we will only need to choose theta on the right size of the graph. And then we can use symmetry to get the other half. Okay. So since we do know that it's symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, so the only thing that we need to sketch the graph for is just the first quadrant. So using the theta and the r coordinate or the table. So here's what we got, negative pi over 2. So plug in a number, evaluate it. We got 2 for the radius, So which is down there. Okay. So the let, uh, let each unit be 1 fourth. So I just want to make the graph a little bit bigger. You can customize the radius scale. You can say that this one is 1 half, 1, you know, 3 half, 2, something like that. Or you can just change any kind of scale you want. So what I'm using here, so this each unit here, it's 1 4. So it's 1 4, 1 half, 3 4, and then 1. So just want to make it a little bit wider, bigger. And then negative pi over 3, so negative pi over 3, so somewhere down here in quadrant 4. And the radius would be 1.87, if just rounded up, so somewhere there. And then negative pi over 6, so the next positions, so the radius would be considered 1.5. And as you can see that the radius is getting shorter. And then at 0, what about the radius at 0? It is 1, so it's getting back to like a unit circle rate, which is 1. And then pi over 6, so we got 1 half. And then pi over 3, so we do have 0.13, so getting even smaller. It's almost getting back to the, the pole. And then pi over 2, so it's getting exactly at 0. So try to connect all those dots there. You'll see that's kind of like a little, like a spiral. Okay, so let's plot those points with the rest of this, because we do know the other side is symmetrical. So this one is called the uh, the cardioid, okay, for the shape. Okay, so once again, the way to pronounce it, the cardioid, okay. So that's the shape of the polar graph.
Okay, so equation of a cardio would look like one of the following. So here's the special pattern that you have to recognize. So this one is for A, it's always greater than zero. So for the quantity, it can be either written as one plus cosine theta, one plus sine theta. And then for the rest of this is one minus cosine theta, one minus sine theta. So you see the pattern looks like this. So eventually the graph is gonna be the cardio. So that means the line of symmetry would be the Y axis, okay? So all graph of cardio it pass through the pole. Okay, so keep that in mind. And let's try another one. So here's another test for symmetry. So polar axis, so we plug in negative theta for this. If that's going to be the exact same outcome, so then that'll be the, the line of symmetry. So it is. So r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Because cosine of negative theta, that's an even function, so it's the same as cosine of theta. And testing for line, theta equals power 2. So using the difference identity of cosine, expand it out, try to simplify it all the way through. So we got r equals 3 minus 2 cosine theta. Obviously, it's not the same as the original equation. And then what about symmetry with respect to the pole? So negative r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Obviously, this one is not the same as the original equation. So the graph is symmetric with respect to the polar axis. So the x-axis, so that means we can only sketch the graph for the upper part of the graph above the x-axis, and then the other part is just the what? It's just the reflection. Again, plotting all the radian, so we got 0, power 6, and getting all the different radius, the, rad the radii. And then power 3, so we do have radius is, is 4, power 2, we do have a radius 3, and then so on and so forth, 2 power 3. So basically just using that, the r theta, uh, the theta r table so kind of like the xy table the one that you guys are getting used with and then the rest of this is just symmetrical with respect to the x-axis or the theta axis okay and then the rest of this simply just connect them so then that would be the polar graph so again another cardioid uh, this one is actually called the uh, limicon without the inner loop okay so limicon. So equation with the limicon without the inner loops would look like the following. So r equals a plus b cosine theta. You guys see that it's being separated and like the previous one for the, the cardioid, it's like a product of the constant times the binomial. But this one is just two separated terms. So the constant and then an other constant times one of the trig ratio. So r equals a minus b cosine theta, or r equals a minus b sine theta. But there's a requirement, a and b must be greater than zero, so that means they're always being positive. And now the condition is that a, it's always greater than b. And this graph do not pass through the pole. Okay, keep that in mind. Unlike the cardioid, doesn't pass through the, uh, the pole. Okay, so here's another one. So test for the symmetry. So polar axis, like what we did for the previous one. It's the same as the previous one, so it's a polar axis. Uh, what about for the uh, the rest of the, the symmetry? Do we need to verify it? Uh, it's better to verify it, you know, in case that it's going to be respect to the other one as well. So obviously this one is not. And then what about for the pole? So also this one is not the same as the previous one. So the only one that we have is symmetric with respect to the polar axis, which is the x-axis. Okay. So just like getting back to what we did for uh, the line of symmetry, so either the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin, the point of symmetry. So this one is satis uh, satisfying the uh, x-axis. And then plotting all those points, the radian, the radius, radian, radius, so we get all those theta and r coordinates. And since we do know that it's with respect to the x-axis, so just make those points symmetrical. And here's what we found. So this one is going around, so it has an in the loop. Okay, so you see that right here? So here's another in the here's another loop. So the outer loop and the in the loop. Okay. So we try to sketch the graph for this. So we started right here. So it's going this way, going this. See, following through the, the mouse direction here. 
and then going back like that okay so the equation with the limit con uh, the in the loop will look like the following so r equals a plus b cosine theta a plus b sine theta a minus b cosine theta and r equals a minus b sine theta it's quite similar to the previous one the one without the inner loop but this one the condition showing that a it's less than b okay so a and b they got to be positive number but a's must be less than b okay so and this one once again so this graph would pass through the poles twice so here's another one so test for the symmetry so again, similar to what we have done previously. So the first one, yes. So it looks like it's with respect to the x-axis. And then what about the line theta equals pi over 2? So cosine is periodic, so it can drop the 2 pi. Well, that's true. So using the uh, identity. So that means r equals 2 cosine of negative 2 theta. It's the same as 2 cosine of 2 theta. It's also with the line of symmetry theta equals power over 2, the y-axis. What about the pole? Since the graph is symmetric to both polar axis and the line, theta equals power over 2, it will also be respect to the pole. So this one is actually satisfied with all those three conditions there, with all those three type of symmetry. And then we just let each unit be one half. So started with the first quadrant there. And then we'll get all that. Well, what I mean by the first quadrant is that the angle in the first quadrant. Okay? So you get like different radius, positive, negative. So basically just plot them. So this one, it goes through the entire the, pol uh, the polar coordinate system. So it's not just right here in the first quadrant, second, third, but also the fourth quadrant everywhere. So you see like four paddle. Kind of like a flower figure or the leaf figure, so it's four paddle. So this type is called a rose with four paddles. So anytime they see the rose curve, so that would look like this. So r equals a cosine of n theta, and r equals a times sine of n theta, where n uh, even has two n paddles, and n is odd, then it has n paddles. So if n is even, so it has two n paddles, because that representing the even number. If n is odd, it's just saying that's n paddle. And also n cannot be zeros or plus minus one, because that it shows like a different kind of direction. So here's another one. So test for the symmetry. So polar axis, plug in negative theta for theta. And then, so this one is not the same, obviously. The line of symmetry, y-axis, theta equals power over two. Expand it out so you can drop 2 pi as well using the identity. So this one obviously is not the same. One is positive, the other one is negative. What about the pole? So square both sides. While well, square the left-hand side, you get r squared equals 4 sine of 2 theta, which is the same. So this one is symmetric with respect to the pole. So we plot that all the positive radian there. We'll get like positive negative radius. And this one is just like a 2 paddle. It's a twin paddle. So anytime they see like a twin paddle, so this one is called the nemniscate, okay? Nemniscate or nemniscate, okay? So the equation of a nemniscus would look like one of the following. So r squared equals a squared cosine of 2 theta, and then r squared equals a squared sine of 2 theta. And this graph would pass through the pole and up. Pro, uh, proper, proper level, proper, proper shape, okay? So some kind of uh, symmetrical. So you can use the calculator, so go to the setting, the mole, and then convert that function to pole. Just highlight that, and make sure that the degree got to be in radian form. Okay, so the mole, the radian, so this one is something that must be done first before you put it into the polar coordinate. And then if you're using polar functions, so this one, make sure that you hit those first using the TID3, 85, 86. So once you go to the Y equal button, you, you, well, you should be able to see that R1, R2, R3. So put it into cosine of 4 theta there. 
So this one is a limicon. And then putting the flower, the rose petal, so you get even petals. So this one is, uh, well, let's see. So this one is the odd petal, seven petals. Okay. So using that, you can always check the graph to make sure that, you know, the way that you did it manually, it's the same as the graph on the calculator. Okay, so thank you for the resources. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, so for 8.3, thank you for watching the video today. So I'll see you guys next time.